Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Lord Jesus, make us worthy to celebrate the exaltation of your glorious cross with sacred hymns and with psalms. When you appear on the last day and the sign of your cross will shine brighter than the sun, gather us before you and surround us with your eternal light that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Savior who made the wood of his cross a strong fortress for his flock and established it as a sign of the covenant for the salvation of his inheritance. By his cross he exalted his church and he gave joy to all people who have believed in it. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives, now and forever. <clears throat> o Christ our God, by your precious cross you have given us perfect salvation and have made us worthy to celebrate this feast with the hymns of praise proclaiming. Blessed are you, O wood of the Holy Cross, for you erased Adam's curse and restored his banished children to their inheritance. Blessed are you, O Holy Cross, for you united heavenly and earthly beings. Blessed are you, O Holy Cross, for you fulfilled the words of the prophets, enlighten the apostles in their preaching, crown the martyrs for their faith, and honor the confessors for their loyalty. Now, O Christ, our Savior, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to make the celebration of the feast of the exaltation of your holy cross a sign of security and of peace. By your cross, exalt your holy church, guide her shepherds and adorn her priests with virtue. Purify her deacons, help the elderly educate children, direct the young, protect orphans, care for widows, and grant rest in your dwellings of light to our brothers and sisters who have died hoping in you. May we find refuge in the shadow of your cross on the great day of your second coming, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever.
Jesus Christ, our Lord, accept these prayers and the fragrance of the incense that we have offered on the feast of the exaltation of your holy cross. May its sign always be visible before our eyes to strengthen us, that we may walk with you toward death, and then stand at your right hand to celebrate the feast of your eternal victory. We glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Kadishat Aloho Kadishat Hayalaton O Kadishat Lama Yubuto sign of your cross, Lord, you ordain your holy priests, and they give us the mysteries through the power of your cross. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Barak Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and to children forever. So then, my beloved, obedient as you have always been, not only when I am present, but all the more now when I am absent. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for God is the one who, for his good purpose, works you both to desire and to work. Do everything without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God, without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine like lights in the world as you hold on to the word of life, that, so that my boast for the day of Christ may be that I did not run in vain or labor in vain, but even as I am poured out as a libation upon the sacrificial service of your faith. I rejoice and share my joy with all of you. In the same way, you should all also rejoice and share your joy with me. Praise be to God always. Right. 
Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Saviour, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you, listening in glory and thanks the word of the living God. The Lord Jesus says, then the kingdom of heaven shall be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them. But the wise, the wise brought flasks of oil along with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise one said in reply, No, for there may not be enough for you, us and for you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom arrived, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other bridesmaids came and they said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, remain vigilant, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessing to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. For giving us his words of life, praise and blessing to Jesus Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I had mentioned yesterday morning that as I came back from the monastery after the retreat this week that I made, and for those who don't know, we have a Maronite monastery in the western part of Massachusetts, which is quite beautiful and an excellent community. But as I was leaving in Petersham, which is the little village that it's in, 
There had been a sign that had been posted, nailed to one of the trees. There were two things as I went to Western Massachusetts. And this is the second one where in leaving the little village, going to the highway, there was just a small sign, but very clearly and legibly written, very well done. And the sign simply said, fear is the virus. And it's a reminder in the midst of all of these, it was striking because of course it is an aspect. Of course we have to be prudent. Of course we have to be virtuous. Of course we must be safe. But the underlying motivation, which is another second aspect of coming back from the retreat is, the news is exactly the same thing it was a week ago when I left. Exactly the same thing, the same phrases. It is just pandemonium. And so the phrase on that little sign on the tree was quite true. Fear is the virus. We're all going to die at some point of something. But we don't have to live in terror because we're going to die. We live in a way in which we move toward in the inexorable aspect of existence. From the moment of creation to the revelation of the word incarnate in the parousia at the end of time. This movement of time from beginning to end, from alpha to omega, is inexorable. We cannot change that fact. When St. Paul is talking to the Philippians, when he writes to them, and Philippi was the parish, as contrast to Corinth, we always mention what a pain that parish was. The parish, the church in Philippi were the people that St. Paul clearly felt the most in sympathy and in friendship with. Yes, he has love for all of them, and surely there is some degree of love that they respond to him. But in Philippi, these were truly friends of his. And as he addresses them, you can see this. But he uses that beautiful term in the reading today, that my life, that my action is poured out, my life is poured out like a libation upon the sacrificial altar of your faith. In other words, the offering of your faith, my sacrifice to bring that faith to the fullest of fruition possible, he compares to a sacrifice. That my very life is poured out that you believe, and your belief shows that response by holding to the word of God. So it's a very beautiful aspect that he has here. And there's no aspect of terror, of fear, but he does say to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. There is a collaboration with grace that we freely have to engage with. I've said it a million times and I'll say it a million times again. Religion is not magic. It's not something that God does to you. It is an invitation that when we engage with, we correspond, we are drawn forward in that whole dimension of life and existence. It's a very beautiful vocation, if you want. It's a very beautiful calling, the gospel. This movement towards a deeper understanding. But he says, because on our part we are weak, to be vigilant and to work out this salvation with fear and with trembling, not terror and not fear in the sense of anguish, but of being awake and of being vigilant. And so, in this whole aspect, of course, in the midst of all of these last months, we hear people over and over again saying, we just wanted to go back to the way it was. It will never go back to the way it was. We always move forward. The world was not the same in the 1920s after the pandemic of the Spanish flu, which really was a pandemic in which tens of millions of people died. The world always moves forward. The question becomes is what do we do with our lives in correspondence with that? Which is why St. Paul uses that image when he tells them to hold steady with the faith. He says, because then on the day of judgment, I will have the great consolation to know that I haven't wasted my time. 
Now he says in the terms that I have run not in vain, you know, that my running, my work, my effort was not in emptiness, in, van in vain, but that you will stand there on the day of judgment and light. Notice in the Husoyo, that on that day when the, sun, when the sign of your cross will shine brighter than the sun, gather us all together to you and place us within that eternal light. It's a very simple vision, but it's what St. Paul is reminding these people of. And so for the individuals who are just kind of looking for it to go back to the way it was, there's another aspect to it, not just simply the fact that 2021 will not be like 2010. We're always moving forward on our lives, but we try to cling. It's understandable psychologically, emotionally. We try to cling to what we know. We try to hang on to things that we understand. Our comfort zone, we call it. Our comfort foods. The smells, the aromas, the music of when I was in high school. These comfort things are actually what we connect with what we call nostalgia. But remember that nostalgia, until the 19th century romantics, nostos and algos, means literally the sickness of homecoming. Nostalgia. That's what it means literally. And it was considered until again the 19th century romantics committing suicide, you know, writing great poetry, then committing suicide. The romantics of the 19th century changed this idea. But up until the 19th century, nostalgia is considered a psychological illness associated with depression. Now, we've mutated it because of the 19th century British romantics and German romantics. So it's changed, and now for us it's more of like sentimentality or emotion or warm, tingly feelings. But nostalgia in itself, for physicians prior to the 19th century, was considered something at times very serious and sometimes even life-threatening, nostalgia. And this idea of just hanging on to things. Now. What St. Paul is telling them is that we move forward because the understanding is that our Lord is always a presence and an absence simultaneously. You come to the divine liturgy. Our Lord is present, but you don't see him in the sacraments. There is an absence and a simultaneity of presence. Because our Lord is always going forward. He's always going further. You see it in the gospel. When the apostles are in the ship and the waves and the storm is going on and our Lord walks on the water, the gospel tells you that as he comes towards the boat, he's actually passing by the boat, leaving them there. And then he stops and he gets into the boat. When Mary Magdalene encounters our Lord on the morning of the resurrection, and she does what everyone would do, is the, the, the thrill and the excitement and the overwhelming joy to see our Lord, she falls in front of him and grabs him around the knees. And our Lord pushes her back. Do not hang on to me, because I have not yet ascended. That aspect of being present, but always moving forward, is in Emmaus. When our Lord sees these two men traveling to Emmaus, when they arrive at their home, nostos, the homecoming, when they arrive at their home, the gospel tells us, or the Acts, the gospel tells us that he is intending to go on the road. And they say, please, it's too late now. You have to stay with us. Of course, they don't recognize him. And it's at the very moment during the meal when they recognize him, he vanishes. At the very moment that he, they see him now, after being with him all afternoon, for hours, not recognizing him, at the moment when they finally, the aha moment, they finally recognize him, He's hidden from their eyes, it says literally. We say vanish, but he's literally hidden. He no longer, do they see him? Our Lord is always a presence and an, a, a, an absence because that is how he's moving us forward. 
And the idea of hanging on to some religious form of when I was 12 and Monsignor McGillicuddy was such a wonderful priest and everything was magnificent and the world was golden and Christmas was always perfect. We live in this kind of fantasy. It's nostalgia. And what it can do, it, at best, you know, it makes you feel warm and tingly and go back and look at old Christmas cards and get teary-eyed. That's okay. But if, if it stops you from moving forward in your life, then you become those individuals that everyone has met, hopefully do not become, of those older people who live only 60 years ago and only talk about the 60 years ago who only talk about 40 years ago. They're not living in this present moment within the Lord because there is moments of grace now and life continues on, but they continually live life by walking backward. It reminds me of a story that when I was in Geneva when I worked there. And in Geneva, it doesn't really snow very much. And yes, the Alps are all around it. It doesn't snow. I have palm trees growing in my backyard. That's why the British romantics love Switzerland, because you could ski in the Alps and then be down at Lake Geneva, where it's kind of almost a Mediterranean climate. And I had a young colleague who was with me, one of the other priests. And he, he likes statistics. And he was struck by the fact of all these people in Geneva talking about how horrible it is it's another rainy Geneva, another rainy Christmas. Well, quite honestly, in the wintertime, that's all it really did was rain in Geneva. We never got much snow. When we got snow, melted within 24 hours. Every morning was fog, and at noon, it always became a beautiful blue sky. That's just Geneva. So he was struck by all of these Genevans talking about how wonderful Christmas used to be. So he went onto the website for the Meteorological Office of Switzerland to find out statistically really how many times there was the beautiful white Christmases that they kept talking about. And he said in the last 30 years, it had snowed at Christmas five times. So he was struck by this fact that we create that past also in our heads. And the devil can also play with it because if he can fix us in the past and not move forward to the day of the resurrection, then he's won. Because we are truly afflicted by nostalgia. This is why you notice in the gospel today of the 10 wise virgins and the 10 foolish virgins, virgins these bridesmaids, these young women who are waiting for the groom to come to start the festivities, they all become drowsy and they all fall asleep. They are all asleep when he arrives. So they're not wise on that point of view. They're not always being vigilant and wakeful. The purpose behind that story is, of course, is they have lived in a way as to provide for the future. They have brought a supply of oil with the lamb to make sure they can get it going again. That is the only distinction between the five women and the other five women. They've looked towards the future and they have provided for it. Because they are all, in waiting for him taking so long, they've all fallen asleep. This is the meaning of St. Paul's letter, that as we move from creation to parousia, from life to death. St. Paul says to the Philippians that even if I am to be proud and to be poured out now as a libation upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and I rejoice with all of you because it means that we're moving in the right direction, which is why St. Paul says that we can finish with is how then, in the midst of fear and pandemic and terror and uh, the whole world's horrible, you're all wretched, you're all racist, the world is a destroyed, everything's a mess. What do you do in the middle of that? Besides intelligently turning off all the screens. 
is that for the Christians, we hold fast to the word of life, St. Paul says in this epistle today. The eternal one, the alpha, the omega, the source of all existence, that God speaks to us each day, and each day at each moment is grace. I mentioned to you last week, the notion of time is not money. Time is grace. And to just bob along superficially is one of the greatest losses. Forget about murder or lying. Just by bobbing along, we destroy the possibility of salvation within our lives. Which is why our Lord says in the gospel that for every idle word we utter, he says we will have to answer on judgment day. Idle, not sinful, just we waste grace, we waste time. So that is why St. Paul says in this epistle, holding fast to the word of life, so that on the day of Christ, the day of judgment, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain, but that this will be, the Philippians, this will be a parish which will be strong, holding fast to the word of God and entering into that divine light that will shine on that day. And so with our Lord, we have this desire to be always moving further, always moving to that ascension. And the last little detail that I'll leave you with that St. Paul says, so when you understand these things of holding to the word, appreciating grace of time, he says, then do everything you do without grumbling and without complaining. Somehow we think that as the years go on, we're just supposed to finish our years, days, life as curmudgeons. This is not the path of God. This is not how the fathers and the mothers died in the desert at the age of 120, griping and complaining because they're always in pain. No. They hold to the word of God. And St. Paul, what he says, the reason why this is beneficial is not because you just suck it up and offer it up. That's not what he's saying. That you do all things without grumbling and, and questioning so that you be blameless and innocent. The children of God, without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. You do this not because it makes you feel better or that your spouse will not kill you. You do this because it makes you radiate light as the children of God to bring life to others. So do all things without grumbling and questioning so that as the children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, you be among them, that you shine among them as lights within the world. What more beautiful vocation could possibly we be invited to? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Itelot madeb heidaloho, walwot aloho dam chade tayut, weinub silgo taibu tauk heul al baitach besludem chayek no. sheets for the transfer him for the Holy Cross in your pews. Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Luke. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of the Catholic Extension Society and its donors. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
queridos. Aleluia. Continue with the Anaphora of St. Mark, the Evangelist, on page 835. 835. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, Almighty Father, you are true and holy love. May we be bound by your divine gift let divine love and find joy in it all the days of our lives. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with the holy kiss that through Jesus Christ our Lord we may be your radiant and blameless flock. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to you, holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. Love and faith. Brothers and sisters, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, and may the Lord be with us. Lord God, we bow before you and ask that you grant us in your mercy the riches of your grace and kindness. May your compassion and assistance sustain us all the days of our lives. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holy God and Father, you sent your only Son to save us, for we are weak and poor. When we had gone astray, he brought us back to your spiritual fold by his royal blood. Through your grace and the favor of your only Son, we implore you to accept this bloodless sacrifice from our sinful hands and through it to forgive our sins. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. Glory, thanks, praise, and honor are yours, O God, the Father, maker of all creation. With your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit, the angels, archangels, and all the heavenly hosts bless and praise you. They cry out and they proclaim.
God the Father Almighty, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, when we had strayed from you by transgressing your law, you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By a saving passion he restored us to our original inheritance, and he gave us life by his divine blood. Kyrie eleison, wabiyamu haudaktam hashradi lema bidhaye, an sabe lachma bidau kori shanto, u parach bu kadesh, waksoya bil talmidau karo mara, sabe khulam mehne kul khuhu, Ono denita fakhro dil dakhlo faikun wakhlof sagiye mete qasayo meti hal khusoyon khame wa khayin al alam alami Kanno alkoso domsi ho men hamro hu men mayo barah hu kodesh hu yabil talmida o karo mara sabish tawa mehne kul hu 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 no deni ta dumo hu dilan diati ki khadato Dakhlo faikun wakhlof sagiye Mete shadu meti heb Khulsun yom khome wa khoyin an alam alamin Whenever you observe these commandments, you proclaim my death and resurrection until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sin. Lord Jesus Christ, we remember your plan of salvation for us, your conception, birth and baptism, your saving passion and life-giving death, your burial, your glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your royal second coming when you will judge all people and reward them according to their deeds. Now we ask you, at that fearful hour, have compassion on us and have mercy on us in your kindness and forgive our sins in your mercy. For this your church implores you and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us. Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit to send and rest upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin monio, anin monio, anin monio, nite modro kuchayu kadisho. Olayam. Nachenna lain war korbono chono. I can 
May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the pardon of faults, the honor, opening, and strengthening of your holy church, and the protection of your children from all sin. And may these holy mysteries allow us to stand with confidence before your awesome throne, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, exalt your holy church established throughout the world. Protect her shepherds of the true faith in peace and security, all the days of their lives, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashar of Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops, pious priests, pure deacons, and all who serve your holy altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who call upon your holy name, Bless those who are near, bring back those who are far. Visit the sick and strengthen the weak. Release captives and assist the oppressed. Bring back those who have strayed that they may live in your fear and reward those who have brought offerings to your holy church. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and all the children of your holy church. Grant them security and peace, and keep domestic and foreign conflicts far from them, so they may live in tranquility. Protect them by the sign of your living and victorious cross. Rescue the persecuted and displaced of your flock, and be a refuge for strangers and a companion to travelers. Grant your eternal reward to monks and those who live solitary lives, and to hermits who live on the mountaintops and in the caves of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, upon this altar and upon your heavenly altar, the holy, ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, confessors, and evangelists, John the Baptist, the forerunner, Stephen, the archdeacon and first martyr, Saint Joseph, Saint Jude, Saint Marin, and all the saints. May we join in their ranks and share in their joyful feast. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the faithful teachers who have gone to their rest in the true faith, especially Peter and Paul, Mark, Clement, Ignatius, Dionysus, Julius, and all those, and all those who endured suffering and persecution for the strengthening of your holy church. Remember also who serve, the, all those who serve your holy altar and forgive their sins, that they may reach your joyful dwellings. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O oh Lord, all those who have left this world and have gone to you. Lead them to your joyful dwellings and blot out all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O oh God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed. With or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. But the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever.
Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. O God the Father, you are merciful and compassionate. You have sanctified this divine service and have perfected it in your good pleasure by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us now that we may be renewed as your spiritual children so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O glorious Father and lover of all people, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation of soul and body, and crush our enemy, the evil one. Grant us your mercy through Christ Jesus our Lord, for you are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing of the Lord. O Lord, look upon us, your inheritance, who bow before you, and guide our steps on your right path. Make us worthy to share in this sacrifice, and may it sanctify the souls and bodies of those who receive it, through Christ Jesus our Lord, we glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy blood, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. O oh God the Father, how can we who are unworthy thank you for your grace? For you have given us this divine gift and have made us worthy to share in the body and blood of your only begotten Son who saved us. Through him and with him, glory and honor are due to you and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, you are worshipped and you are holy. Bless and forgive the priests who are the stewards of your people and of your holy church. Forgive the servers of your divine mysteries and all the faithful who have shared in this sacrifice. Care for orphans, help widows, assist the poor and the distressed, satisfy the hungry, and protect all who call upon your holy name in every place. 
May your name be glorified with that of your Father and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.